Congratulations, gentlemen. 30 years. How have you managed to do it? Fashion is so notoriously difficult to last in. Uh, 30 years is a lifetime in this industry, that's for sure. Definitely. It's, God knows it's the, one of the most difficult businesses, but it's, it's truly gratifying. Uh, it moves at such lightning speed today. There's so many voices, so many choices, so much competition, but you never have a chance to get bored, that's and for sure. And your theme this year was uh, Through the Looking Glass, Alice in Wonderland, Lewis Carroll. What was the inspiration and why is that something for 2018? It was. We were looking back at, you know, Badgley, Michigan being 30 years old and we sort of were doing a retrospective and, you know, introspective looking back at what we've done over the past 30. And so we kind of thought it was Through the Looking Glass and we wanted to, um, you know, we went to Alice in Wonderland from there. So it was kind of a way to take Badgley, Mishka, which has always been about fantasy and about glamour, and take the fairy tale part of Alice in Wonderland. Not the dark parts at all, okay. just the very happy parts of Alice, and um, that's what inspired our collection. Lots of flowers. Lots of flowers, yeah. I mean, we're, we're, James and I love glamour, that there's a thread of glamour through everything we do. We do home, our teacups are glamorous, our red carpet gowns are glamorous. That's sort of what we stand for. And I think a woman's life today all of our lives, you know, life is, it's a lot. And she has to dress oftentimes very practical and sort of industrial in right, a way. So a little fantasy. So a, li a in little your fantasy fashion. goes yeah. a long way. Um, now that you're looking at this a career that you all have had thus far and still some to go, um, what do you think is most key? at surviving in the fashion business? Is it a sense of, um, is it the fashion itself and the creativity? Or how much does the business side of it play into it and knowing sort of where to go when? It's a combination of both actually. Yeah. You can't be just, just creative or just business. If you're just business, then no one's gonna want your clothes. If you're just creative, then you're not gonna survive in the business. So it's a combination of both. And I think the secret to, um, not, to not so much a secret, but the key, to what Badgley Mishka has done over the past 30 years is not trying to be everything to everybody. We've always wanted to make women feel beautiful and confident, and that's you know from the beginning, from our first collection of 12 little black dresses to today when we have you know so many brand extensions and things, we just try, try to make women feel beautiful and confident. But you have tried things, like for example, last season you tried audience voting. So it also meant that you were opening up your you know runway show to the public and to as many people as Absolutely. wanted to vote and take part. Yeah. But this is new. I mean, who has these ideas among the two of you, or is it somebody else? Is it uh, the brand? No, I mean, I think James and I really, you know, gone are the days that you, a designer sits in their ivory tower and dictates. I mean, you can't dictate to a woman anymore. Uh, she's got, she's too savvy. She's got so much knowledge at her fingertips. Vogue magazine can't say wear blue. They, she doesn't even care anymore. She's doing her own thing. And uh, we listen to her. We work really closely with our customers. And you have to today. Luxury has been doing quite well recently. Tiffany, you know, Ralph Lauren, Michael Kors. I don't know if you consider that luxury, but these yeah. these these public, you know, um, stocks are, are are flying high. And I'm curious as to how you're experiencing the luxury end of things. Is the consumer there and spending? The consumer is right definitely now she there is. and spending. Yeah. yeah, she really is. We're like opening 30 stores in China right now. We're launching a fragrance uh, next month. Uh, you know, the economy is booming. And she's indulging herself right now. Do you have to go to China though for this? Is that, that 30 stores? Is that going to be what is the next? Sort of we look. Growth? Yeah, we, we're always looking for expansion and where it makes sense. Unfortunately, retail is you know tough in this country. Mm -hmm. All the beautiful little carriage trade shops over the years have closed down by the hundreds. Uh, they just can't compete in today's market, and that's really sad because that used to be uh, sort of the backbone of our industry. And uh, department stores, you know, are uh, on again, off again, have, are having a tough time. So you find ways where you can be creative and, and you find business, you know, the internet's amazing. We have a huge business in the Middle East because, you know, women wear gowns for lunch there. Yes. <laughs> um, we love her. I, I just quickly want to ask you about the department stores follow up to that because you do wholesale into places like Bloomingdale's and Nordstrom. How has that channel been going and how is the clientele changing perhaps there? I think we've been lucky because we have had a very um, you know, strong sell throughs in the stores. You know, we've been doing very well there. And it's a way of working with your retailers so that they can have a special experience. You know, if your customer wants to shop in the department store, she's gonna shop there. If she wants to shop on the internet, that's a whole different experience. So you make that special for her as well. But to be honest, I think we work twice as hard 
to get the same results that mm -hmm. we used to. It used to be so easy and it's not anymore.